Blender 4.2 is here. It's one of the biggest updates we've ever have. We have a new version of Eevee. They've changed the add-on system, and we also have new shader nodes and cycles, but we're gonna get in all the features in less than five minutes. Let's get started. If you somehow missed it, my short film Watermelon Girl is also done, which was made entirely in Blender, so I will link that in the description below. Now, Eevee 2.0 is here, and it is one of the biggest updates we've ever had, so I have an entire dedicated video to this if you wanna check it out. Diving into the highlights, they've added global illumination with screen space ray tracing, improved material reflections. We can now have unlimited light sources. Lights are now visible through refractive surfaces. We have improved shadows. Materials now support displacement. Emission materials can now contribute lights to the scene. There's a new thickness output for better modeling of refractions. Subsurface scattering has been improved. There are now new volume light probes. There's been optimizations made across the board most notably in terms of volumes, motion blur, and depth of field have all seen improvements. And then overall stability has been added to the viewport and more. A huge one is the ray portal node. It's a new shader node that transport rays into another location in the scene, allowing for the creation of visual effects like rendering portals. This is going to open up some wild tricks, including portal effects, illusionary windows, and more. The extensions platform is aiming to replace the add-on section now, where you can authorize a connection to extensions.blender.org and now you can get add-ons, themes, and more from these repositories that will be community managed. We now have collections exports. We can export entire collections, making a motion pass now follow vertex theme color and can be altered for onion frame style coloring. There's a new frame scene range function, which adjusts the horizontal view to match the scene or preview range. Performance adjustments have been made to keyframes with smoother panning and drastic improvements when moving in keys on heavy scenes. Likewise, in the NLA editor, when working with long actions, that's been improved as well. There's also a new key type called generated keys, which are generated by automatic tools. The shape key editor now has the ability to see and edit non-relative shape key animations. Subdivided bones are now named sequentially, and you can set the wire width of custom bone shapes, which is awesome. Bones can now be active and editable even when invisible. And there's a new menu item to copy a properties driver to the same property on all selected items. There's a new copy global transform add-on, which is a professional animators tool worth learning. Pierre has a video over on his channel. The Kronos PBR Neutral View Transform has been added. This is great for things like product rendering. The compositor now utilizes GPU acceleration configured via render settings on the compositor editor's properties panel, and the render compositor CPU backend has been rewritten for significant performance improvements. There's now an overlay that can be displayed on each node's last execution time, which can be enabled under the overlays pop-up, and there's a new bloom mode, which has been added to the glare node. A random but welcome performance improvement is that undo operations are now much faster due to the implementation of implicit sharing. The SDF now supports physically accurate thin film interference effects for specular reflections and transmissions, meaning we can get more realistic materials. The Huang model and the principal hair shader dynamically switches between near and far field models for accurate results when viewing hairs up close. Open image denoising has been upgraded to the latest version, offering improved denoising quality, meaning you can speed up your renders while maintaining quality. The GPU acceleration is now enabled on AMD GPUs for Windows and Linux, and CPU renders can also benefit from GPU accelerated denoising, improving just overall performance and render quality. There's also a new type of noise added called Blue Noise Distributed Sampling, which improves the sampling quality, especially at lower sample rates. Again, this will make denoising faster and rendering faster overall. Volume lights have been upgraded, particularly for spotlights and area light spreads, resulting in more accurate and visually pleasing lighting effects. There's also a world override, a new option for view layers, allowing for more flexible scene management and rendering configurations. And Intel GPU rendering has also been improved. More detailed notes on this in the wiki. In geometry notes, the Realize instances now supports partial realization of geometry, and some nodes got a performance boost. There's also a new matrix socket type with various nodes for transformation and matrix options. USD continues to see improvements as do Alembic and GLTF exporters, and OBJ and STL importers now default to what is called validating meshes. This is initially a slower method, though it's been sped up two to three times faster in this version, but what it will do is prevent crashes from malformed data. In the UV editor, we now have edge and vert slide, and the new snap mode is replacing the old, and it's called snap to grid. And Curve's got a bunch of new operators for subdivision, handle types, and cyclic toddles, directions, and more. Sculpting on a host of new tools, mostly related to face sets and masking, and you can now choose between fast and exact solvers for trim tools. User interface actually got a large overhaul. The entire interface font has been changed. Node groups have descriptions, you can now have group properties rearranged, and you can also change the color tag. Hitting Control F in the Outliner menu now initiates Outliner filtering. Orphan data is now called unused data. 
The Blender file mode supports managing user accounts, and Purge Operator now offers more options. There's also a new cleanup menu under File, which is great. The video sequencer has gotten a lot more love, tons of UI tweaks to enhance the experience, but most notably, they've overhauled the strips timeline look and improved performance across the entire experience. If you're enjoying this video, please maybe stop and check out my Patreon. I put up a lot of projects on there that you can download and use. I put up shaders and I also put scene breakdowns and kind of casual tutorials as well. But let's get back to the main video. Now, as usual, I'd like to end this video by recommending that you go support the lovely devs over at Blender to help us keep getting updates like this.